Ladies and gents, Omsi Jubex, and this is America's stealth bomber strike sent a 30,000 pound message to Iran. This was a sandbox. Proposal again? Okay. Uh, I guess Iran, USA is like sending a message to Iran because of Iran and Israel thing. Yeah, I, I don't know what this story is going to be about, but another escalation in global events. Who the fuck knows? Or is it just like everybody kind of see that coming? I don't know. Ever in US always happens, then the proposal message happens, and yeah. I still remember the fact recent story about proposal message. It's the most insane video I've ever seen, but okay. It I really was dumbfounded in that video. Why would Iran even try to do that with America? But okay. Of all the list of countries you think can go toe to toe against America, you would not think of Iran. Even today, like you would not think I don't why I don't know why I said even today. I don't know in the spectrum of power. Where is Iran today compared to back then? Like, did they improve or went down? Who the fuck knows? But yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. This was a sandbox, obviously. Great channel. Uh, he has great sources. Yeah, even the big channels talk about him. Like, how he, he's a great source uh, for information and things. So it's gonna be interesting. Let's do it. Last week, an undisclosed number of U.S. Air Force B-2 Spirit stealth bombers engaged hardened underground weapons facilities inside Yemen in the aircraft's first ever combat operations targeting Houthi forces. According to the Defense Department, the B-2s were a part of a broader operation aimed at destroying weapons Houthi rebels have been using to indiscriminately attack civilian, commercial, and even military vessels traversing the international waters of the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden in recent months. But based on the Houthis' lack of significant air defense capabilities, the use of these stealth bombers suggests there's more to this story than meets the eye. Because while the primary objective of this mission was to wipe out Houthi weapon stockpiles, the secondary objective was almost certainly to send a 30,000 pound bunker busting message to the Islamic Republic of Iran. So let's talk about that message, the B-2 spirit and the weapon only it can carry, the massive ordnance penetrator. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. According to media reports, North Korea is deploying thousands of troops to Ukraine to support Russian forces in their ongoing invasion. And recent footage that surfaced online of North Korean troops being issued Russian uniforms and equipment certainly seems to substantiate these claims. But we're still not entirely clear on just how many troops are actually headed to the fight, with some outlets reporting figures as high as 10 or even 15,000 troops, and others reporting as few as 1,500 special operations soldiers. And the truth is, we likely won't know for sure for some time to come, and you better believe I'll be using ground news to keep tabs on this story. Ground News is an aggregator that collects news stories published by outlets all around the world and places them all into a single easy-to-read feed, making it easier than ever to not only stay on top of what's going on in the world, but also to see through the different kinds of bias that are so commonplace in today's news coverage. Right here on Ground News, I can see... Hey, well, go to ground.news, force sandbox, and support this channel. ...every day. Again, that's ground.news slash sandbox to get 40% off their vantage plan to help you stay on top of things. Last week's American strikes against Houthi forces inside Yemen came amid heightened tensions all throughout the region, as Israel's ongoing and controversial military operations against the terror group known as Hamas, operating inside Israeli-occupied Gaza, has boiled over into a widespread offensive that some have come to characterize as a genocide of the Palestinian people. That offensive, spurred by a Hamas-led terror attack on Israeli civilians just over a year ago, has since given Iran-backed extremist organizations impetus to launch attacks on Israeli, American, and other partner nations under the guise of support for the increasingly desperate Palestinian population. 
Now, the Houthis, like Hamas and Hezbollah, are Iranian-backed, trained, and funded militant groups that Iran uses to advance its foreign policy aims while maintaining a degree of plausible deniability, and a somewhat similar methodology to Russia's own infamous PMC Wagner. Using these allegedly independent groups to conduct combat operations on foreign soil diffuses responsibility away from the nation actually devising and funding the attacks. Now, the Defense Department has released very few details regarding the B-2's actual role in these airstrikes, including the number of aircraft involved, the air bases they operated out of, or the types of munitions they used. Initially, there was some discussion that the stealth bombers may have been carrying the massive and uniquely American 30,000-pound GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator, or MOP, a bunker-busting bomb that can only be carried by the B-2. But subsequent reports suggest that this was unlikely, and instead, they probably deployed smaller, 5,000-pound bunker busters like the GBU-72B. But the truth is, the finer details of the B-2 operations last week are just not as important, geopolitically speaking, as the message, the use of these aircraft. So let me get this straight. These kind of bombs penetrate deep inside a bunker and then explodes. I don't know why I didn't assume that it would explode, but I was uh, out of bunker busting bomb, I just assumed like it would just cause destruction by penetration, obviously everything would collapse, there you go, because it penetrates through. Because that's what you see every time you see these kind of bombs penetrating through walls and concrete. That would make sense, why not have a timed explosion deep inside of, yeah. ...sent to Iranian officials. And that message definitely included the GBU-57, even if it wasn't a part of the payload. Now, the Houthis aren't without air defense capabilities whatsoever. They do have a variety of legacy Soviet-era systems, like the SA-2, SA-3, SA-6, and SA-9. The SA-3 notably being the surface-to-air missile system that took down an American F-117 Nighthawk, the world's first operational stealth aircraft over Yugoslavia back in 1999. But... Realistically speaking, none of these systems, nor any of the Iranian-sourced hardware the Houthis have bolstered their air defenses with in recent years, like the Sayyad 2C, could really hold the B-2 spirit at risk with proper mission planning. And that tells me that the decision to use B-2s for these airstrikes can probably be attributed to a combination of two things. The first is minimizing risk to American troops. Sure, the B-2 is overkill against Houthi air defenses, but why not use it if you've got it? And the second was to send a very specific message, not to the Houthis, but to their financial benefactors in Iran. Providing Iran with a stark reminder of America's ability to hold even heavily fortified underground bunkers at risk was all but certainly among the primary objectives for this operation. Iran has moved large facets of its nuclear weapons research, along with weapons storage facilities, command and control, and even entire air bases underground in recent decades, all meant to shield them from Israeli or American attack. Perhaps among the most important of these subterranean structures are the nuclear enrichment facilities at Natanz, some 180 miles, or around 300 kilometers, south of Tehran. In 2009, the U.S. revealed previously classified intelligence showing Iranian forces burrowing deep into the Zagros Mountains near the facility as part of the nation's ongoing effort to move nuclear centrifuges deeper underground than American buster-busting munitions could reach. To put it simply, Iran is betting that by stuffing their most vital command elements, military assets, and nuclear research programs hundreds of feet below the Earth, they'll be safe from American airstrikes, a notion the B-2 spirits deployed last week all but certainly aimed to dispel. Because yeah, uh, I mean... You know, Iran officially gave up its nuke, right, uh, at a certain point, and then there was like a, some kind of a, like a thing that was holding them, like officially, like you can't make a nuke or something, but Trump basically walked out of something, uh, I don't know details behind that, so 
Iran officially doesn't have nuke. That's the case, right? But they have facilities like that, so they could have nukes. That's the question here, right? But, uh, you know, before Trump, uh, like, walked out of the deal, the deal was uh, basically implied that, you know, U.S. officials and people can probably, like, check if they're making nukes or not. And, like, half-life of all this, uh, you know, plutonium, whatever, right? Uranium, plutonium, all this. Half-life of that is, like, really high. So if there was, you know, like, any nuke or nuclear type material, right? They could like basically detect it. But now they can't because they don't have the deal and shit. So they could actually be making nukes right now. Iron could technically have nukes right now and nobody would know. Is that the case? Because that shit is terrifying. Because while the 5,000 pound bunker busters employed last week are reportedly potent enough to reach targets buried beneath upwards of 150 feet of earth or at least 15 feet of reinforced concrete, the 30,000 pound GBU-57 mop is said to be capable of burrowing through well more than 200 feet of earth and more than 25 feet of solid reinforced concrete. In fact, there are no publicly available figures as to just how deep the mop can reach, but most assessments suggest that it's likely much deeper than even those figures reflect. There's straight up just not many places on Earth, or even beneath it, where the mop can't reach you. And not only is the B-2 the only aircraft that can carry this weapon, but the B-2 can carry two of them. So let's make like the mop and dive a bit deeper into this weapon system. The GBU-57 Massive Ordnance Penetrator is a downright massive GPS-guided bomb that consists of a BLU-127 warhead case and a KMU-612 tail kit that houses a GPS navigation system just like- so Hold up there, so only GPS not a heat seeking or something like that. So in some event, let's just say some kind of a cyber attack happens or any type of attack happens which is pre-planned and takes out satellites key satellites that would control GPS. Bombs like this would be like uh, useless at that point or it's like you can just like aim it manually and see what happens type of way. Because if it's wholly rely on GPS, that's kind of like a problem, isn't it? it? It should have like secondary things as well, like maybe heat seeking or something or like manual control. Like you'd find in America's JDAMs or Joint Direct Attack Munitions. The tail has four active lattice fins that deploy when the weapon is dropped and are powered by separate actuators to guide the bomb into its target coordinates with a high degree of precision. The original weapon's designation was the GBU-57A-B, followed by the GBU-57B, GBU-57CB, GBU-57DB, GBU-57EB, and gbu 57 FB, but what changes each of these new designations actually reflect remains largely classified. At only around 20 and a half feet long and with a diameter of roughly 31 and a half inches, the mop is only a little bigger than a tomahawk. I'm guessing FB must be really like a strong one because it could have nicknamed like FU or something, FB, there you go. Because that's how America usually rolls, right? <laughs> they try to, you know, like, uh, at least internally, they try to, like, uh, na you know, aim for a certain designation. They can have a cool nickname like that, right? With the bone and everything. <laughs> B1R boner or some shit like that. Cruise missile, but weighs in at nearly 10 times as much. At right around 27,125 pounds. More than 5,300 pounds of which is all explosives, made up of around 4,590 pounds of AFX 757 and another 752 pounds of a newer explosive called PBXN 114. Now that AFX 757, the primary explosive found in the mop, is a propellant-like plastic explosive compound that was developed specifically to maximize blast energy output for bunker buster bombs just like the mop. Of course, for a 30,000 pound weapon, you might be surprised to hear that the warhead itself only represents about 20% of its total weight. 
With no means of onboard propulsion or fuel storage needs, that means the immensely dense and hardened fuselage of the weapon itself, designed to bore directly through even the most secure underground structures, weighs in at north of 20,000 pounds. Now, these super strong casings are 3.05 inches thick, and they were built by Superior Forge and Steel Corporation out of Lima, Ohio, and Elwood National Forge in Irvine, Pennsylvania, to the tune of around $90 million for the initial tooling and first production batch. Now, testing of the GBU-57 started in New Mexico's White Sands Missile... Yeah, one thing that surprises me in America is that they, you know, even the scientific community and, like, our R&D community uses metric because that's how it works. All of this comes out of that kind of, like, scientific R&D style. But this somehow still uses, like, pound. If I get penetrated for 5,000 pound, like, hmm, okay range back in March of 2007, and by October of 2009, the Pentagon issued an urgent request to Congress to reallocate funds to rapidly source four of these weapons through concurrent production, meaning that those first four MOPs were built while testing was still underway, and then to integrate them into the B-2 Spirit. Now, just how many of each MOP variant, or how many MOPs in all the U.S. maintains at any given time, remains shrouded in mystery. According to Air Force procurement documentation, eight weapons were purchased in fiscal... Mm, enough not to mop about. Yeah, th this mop thing is obviously newer, newer bunker busting bomb. Uh, but don't... Okay, B-21s are not ready or something? Because they're making this for B2s. I mean, B2 is still going to be in service, but B21 is supposed to be a better version of it, right? Uh, I don't know. I thought it was like kind of like ready, not ready, or like one of those things. Like they might be using it. It will not tell you until very after type of way. Fiscal year 2009. And by September of 2011, it was reported that Boeing, the weapons prime contractor, had delivered 20 complete mops in all. It remains. Yeah, Boeing. Boeing's like, okay, you know what, our doors are flying off and many other shit is happening. Might as well make destructive things, why not? Unclear how many additional weapons have been procured, but we do know that there have been several production runs since then. We also know that in 2012, the same year, the U.S. revealed Iran's deep subterranean nuclear enrichment facility near Natanz may reach as deep as 300 feet below the surface, that the Pentagon allocated another $82 million, roughly $114 million in today's currency, to improve the bomb's penetration capabilities. In January of the following year, the Pentagon announced that this effort making... was successful, but disclosed no further details. It is, however, worth noting that the weapon's generally accepted 200-foot penetration depth is based on Air Force claims made... Yeah, B2s are really insane. I mean, when you really look at it, it looks like really thick because it has to be. There's a payload inside. You have to walk around. It's like a proper cabin and everything. But whenever you look at it from any other like way, like you know, refueling and things like this, it looks really like a flat alien disc. <laughs> this whole B2 thing is so insane, right? Like the first time this was like developed, I don't like testing out people started to like report alien spacecraft a lot around this time. Then realized, wait a minute, it's a B2 bomber. It looks so different. Before that was like 117 Nighthawk, which kind of was, was kind of similar design. I mean, big wing, whatever it's called, type of planes, right? Yeah, and when it comes to color, like, shouldn't they paint this, like, what is it, bantam black or whatever that is, right? Like, the black that doesn't reflect anything back. Uh, people start to, like, paint their car, BMWs and things, start to paint their cars like that, which to me was insane. Because physics, in the end, it's all physics, right? If it doesn't reflect any light, which means E equals MC squared, light is energy, basically. If it doesn't reflect anything back, the car is heating up constantly. Are we gonna, like, shed that off? But when it comes to, like, planes and bombers, I don't know, like, you can't figure shit out because they are not supposed to commerce. This is not a commerce vehicle to go to, like, milk shop or something to get a liter of milk or whatever, right? These are, like, special operation planes. You can figure shit out like temporarily, even with their color, if it absorbs heat, right? It can capture it and can release it later on when you park it or something. I don't know, something like that. But Bantam Black, yeah, that would be like insane. 
but I guess that would have a problem with radar, right? Because radar relies on both things. Wait a minute, maybe it doesn't like, if, if, the, if you send a radar signal, it just absorbs it, it doesn't send you back. It doesn't mean that something is there, because this thing basically reflects it back, which is same as not coming back, right? So if you throw a signal, it doesn't come back. That's the same thing they're doing, but this will be more efficient that way. I don't know. I think that must be like uh, heating issues. Prior to this upgrade, all the way back in 2007. Now, the most recent MOP upgrades came at around the same time as additional procurements were announced back in 2018. Now, what exactly most of this slew of upgrades included is classified, but we do know that they were collectively called Enhanced Threat Response 4, or ETR-4, weapon modifications, and one of those improvements was a new fuse system. Now, designing a fuse that can withstand being dropped from high altitude and then penetrating through hundreds of feet of earth is a huge challenge, and an improved fuse could not only make the weapon... It's an immense challenge, just physics standpoint. Because you need certain type of like kinetic energy if you want to penetrate things. It has to be a certain type of like a size like that. The more size goes up, the more the less penetrating effect it has, right? So you need more force, but you can't have too much force because ICBMs, right? Uh, ballistic missiles. What do they do, right? Uh, ballistic missiles are so fast, like a bullet when like entering atmosphere after leaving it. It is so fast and has such a kinetic energy. That's what fast is, kinetic energy. As soon as it touches basically anything, let's just say ground. As soon as it touches ground, it just explodes. Because there is so much energy inside, hitting the ground, right? Even if it can penetrate, maybe just hitting that, at that level of energy just sends all the energy back inside. It just explodes. How basically how meteors explode, how asteroids, meteors, all that explode, right? Uh, how that happens, right, in the moon and everything, there's like always a round crater, why is there a round crater and not like weird oblong or something, because asteroids come from like a weird direction, not directly, because it explodes, that's why, and that's how ICBMs work, they explode, so if you have that kind of like a kinetic energy, it won't penetrate, it would just explode on the ground, like you're, you want it to penetrate, so how do you do that, there has to be like a limit, where you can have like certain type of size, anything above that, you need more force and that will be just basically make it a ballistic missile, right? So, I don't know. Weapon more safe and reliable, it could feasibly allow it to penetrate even further without detonating prematurely. Now, according to reports from the war zone, the inert version of the BLU-127CB, the bomb portion of newer MOPs, actually houses something known as a booster. But they couldn't be certain whether this booster is a form of propulsion, like a rocket booster, or is a term used to describe some other type of penetration aid, like a small explosive charge that enables the detonation of the main charge. And to be honest, I'm not sure what- I think it could be that once it hits the ground, it will fire up. Because what I just said only applies if it- You know how like they say, if you jump from like certain higher uh, distance into water, or some swing pool, whatever, it's like hitting a wall. It's because of that, right? Same thing would apply here with the ballistic element, right? As soon as you hit the ground, it would explode at certain kinetic speed. But if you hit the ground and then it accelerates with the booster, it might be able to penetrate more. It could be that, right? What to make of it either, but I wanted to include it so you can decide for yourself. We also know that three MOPs were expended over the White Sands missile range for testing in 2018, with three B-2s each dropping a single weapon on known wave. targets. The Pentagon released no details regarding these tests, except that they were all successful. According to Army Lieutenant Colonel Michelle Baldanza, a spokesperson for the Pentagon's testing office, they, quote, demonstrated the weapon's effectiveness. And that was all she'd say. It's particularly worth noting that the U.S. has demonstrated the ability to drop multiple bunker busters on the exact same location using the same GPS guidance systems found throughout the mop line of weapons. And this allows American aircraft to strike targets that are it. even de are deeper than pound? their bunker busters will allow for individually. 
effectively by hitting the crater created by the first weapon with a second, and then a third, and so on in rapid succession. The B2 Spirit can carry a whopping 16 2,000 pound GBU 31 bunker busters that can be used in this very me. Yeah, how many of them bone can carry? Because I know bone has bigger carry capacity than the B2. Bone has bigger capacity than any other bomber. B1, right? Only downside is it's not stealthy. Which is not just only it's like a massive downside. Like if you want to like attack Iran or something, I'm pretty sure they would take down B1 before it can even do any damage. You need a stealth plane like B2, but still, technically knowing like how, how much they can carry would be like interesting. But a single B2 could also carry two 30,000 pound mops to engage multiple targets or one very deep one. With multiple B2s involved, as we saw in last week's operation, you could feasibly hit the same target with several mops to ensure complete destruction of targets, even at the most extreme of depths. All right, so now that we know the basics of the mop, let's close out by briefly summarizing how this weapon- Yeah, but does it have an accuracy of that? Like, first hole that a width of that missile created. Can another- uh, GPS guided missile be directly aligned with that? Like, does it have that level of accuracy? Because I always assume that, like, all modern technology, but like, after re watching a lot of these videos, I realize it's not that simple. Accuracy is not that easy. For sure, America probably can do it. Why not? Weapon would be used by B 2 spirits engaging targets inside Iran. Now, details about last week's B 2 airstrikes against Houthis remain pretty murky, but it's likely that these aircraft departed from Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, which is home to Look all at this shit. Look at that. Look at that these aircraft <laughs> departed from Yeah, yeah. Most countries on the planet would go crazy even having one of these, but look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. what is it? 10, 15, 20. How many B2 planes zigzagging there? This footage always like stuns me because it's the same foot as every time people use it right like many videos i've seen <laughs> imagine people just like noticing they're like standing in the background somewhere like military doing military thing and you just see, see these b2 planes one after another just flying do be you know b2 planes are they silent i think they're silent right like that's silent than other planes it should be because they're stealth planes it better be and i've seen some top gear top, yeah top gear episodes when they came to America for, for whatever re whatever thing, right? In I think it's 20 or was it the 21 season or something like that. And they saw the B2 plane there and they made a joke about, wait, so isn't it supposed to be stealthy, this and that? And you couldn't hear anything about the plane noise or something. They were just looking at the plane. While they were talking, you can't hear anything. So they must be really silent, right? Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, which is home to all 19 of America's operational stealth bombers. In an attack against Iran's subterranean nuclear facilities near Natanz, this would also likely be the starting point. But to be clear, B-2s have been known to operate from a variety of air bases all around the world for different missions. Now, we are not talking about white knuckle flying. After departing Whiteman, the two person. Wait a minute, what was that? He just broke the sound barrier. What is this? They are not talking about white knuckle flying. After departing Whiteman, the two person B two crew would have a long and daunting flight ahead of them as they covered the nearly seven thousand miles to their turn. Yeah, people have told me that because of the Taiwan thing, right? Uh, you know, when it comes to like Indian Ocean dominance and like this route right here. India might be really important how, you know, you, you know, like, guard things and how you operate. But then people told me, wait a minute, there's an island here somewhere that America controls. Obviously, I bet there are many islands everywhere where America controls. So this place, they can basically control it like that. Do, do, can they have, like, a B-2 there if they want to, like, have missile and can just fly from here to Iran or something? Why do you, why did they have to like go to, from like USO or something? Targets at a cruising speed of roughly 550 to maybe 600 miles per hour, about the same speed as a commercial airliner, with the most direct route possible, which 
wouldn't be possible due to mission requirements and in-flight refueling, they'd be staring down the barrel of a roughly 24-hour round trip, and in reality, it would almost certainly be significantly more. Now that means mission- like, I'm thinking very stupid things right now, but I don't know, like, when you, know, when you like have a long flight somewhere with a commercial flight sitting around like, oh God, eight hours, nine hours, when we, we, when we gonna land? Imagine being a fighter pilot in a B-2 where you're flying 24 hours straight. I don't know, I think that would be like really cool. I, I would feel really like strong, right? Because you don't have B-2 bomber for fuck's sake. And you're literally just a plane. You're flying 24 hours. That, that's like really power move right there, right? Planning would include much more than just route planning and th and are they flying really high? How high they're flying? Look at that, like I can see horizon and everything. I can see cloud very low. How high they fly, man? Threat mitigation. You see, unlike other strategic bombers, like say the B-52, which flies these long duration missions with a crew of five, including two pilots, two navigators, and an electronic warfare officer, America's stealth bomber splits all of these duties up between just the two pilots on board. I'm going to quote B-2 pilot Lieutenant Colonel Nikki Rogue Politer. When you're faced with a 24-hour mission or a long-duration mission, you really get into the details of who is going to do what task and how we're going to manage our sleep. Seriously. You see, both pilots need to be awake, alert, and in their seats, not just for the combat operation. It's literally those snipers, like, <laughs> staking out a place or going to a place while taking turns, right? It's, it's insane feeling, and like... You know, these B-2 fighter pilots must be, like, really important that way, right? Like, they must feel like... When you have, like, a whole team of doing things, that's something. But when you have two people doing one of the most important jobs that you can have, because of B-2 plane, you don't just deploy B-2 plane for the smallest thing. And 24-hour trip if needed, that, that's something, right? ...but for things like in-flight refueling, which, depending on weather conditions and visibility, can be a very stressful ordeal. So the plan has to account for rest to make sure that neither pilot is falling asleep at the stick by the time they reach their target area. And according to Captain Caleb James, a doctor with the 509th Medical Group, medications are issued to these pilots to help them, quote, stay focused on the mission when mission requirements or the rigors of combat... Caffeine? You win me, you have one of the drugs. What is it? That's like a lot of drug. I forgot the name of that. Adderall? I don't know, wait a minute, not Adderall. Yeah, okay, I tried to Google that, but I couldn't come up. I, I don't know. What is the drug? Like somebody comment down like that is like you, you take Xanax and things like that for like, you know, whatever antidepressant thing. To me it just works weirdly. But there's a drug in the USA people take for alertness and things. It makes you energized, right? Like People, you know, like I hear that in the movies and all the time. I try to like source that here, like you can't buy that in India apparently for whatever reason. But yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a drug like that. I don't know. Okay, I even for because I googled so much, I even forgot what the point I was going with. But yeah, comment down that drug, like I don't know why this is gonna bug me now. Combat just won't let them get any sleep during the flight. But these marathon missions aren't exactly unfamiliar. Yeah, that's that's why I was thinking. Yeah, so you can take drugs like that and just be awake and like caffeine and uh, what is it like? Yeah, a lot of drugs like same drug they have monster energy and things like that. Right? Alertness drugs, whatever. Territory for B-2 crews. In fact, the B-2 Spirit holds the record for the longest bombing mission in history between Whiteman Air Force Base and a target area over Afghanistan and then back, spanning a mind-numbing 44 hours of flight time. As Captain Chris Thunder Beck, who flew long-duration bomber missions in the B-52... I mean, when, you, when they can't detect you, and, like, you can just fly all the time because your refueling station in the air. It basically is a video game at that time. You're bombing and refueling, bombing. By the way, it's been two days. That's what we've been doing, okay? 52, before transitioning to the B-2, put it, your mind doesn't know what to think at that point. You're just awake. Now, the B-2 could feasibly cover most of a direct flight to Iran on a single tank of gas, thanks to its unrefueled range of some 6,900 miles. But while carrying a pair of 30,000-pound bunker busters, these aircraft would likely need to meet up with tankers every six hours as they traversed the globe.
Now, flying the direct route would take the aircraft over several friendly nations, but several not so friendly ones as well, like Russia. By the way, several friendly nations. This, right? Every time you see this curved flight. If you are one of those people who are wondering why, why do they always take this kind of a curved type of flight, it's not curved. Again, I've been bitching about this in the past. Like, this is one of those things like people should know about, and I think people usually don't, which always surprises me. This is a 2D map. Planet is not 2D flat surface. I just realized there are people who believe that flat Earth is like, I don't even want to start that. But it's a sphere, right? Planet is a sphere. So this, what you see right here, is not a curved sphere. They're literally going point A to, they're literally going how like a crow flies in straight line. But this is how it will look if you like make it into a 2D map. So if, if you want to fly from USA to Iran like that, you will go from Greenland closing to the Atlantic like that, right all the way up here, Sweden and Iran. And that would be a straight line flight, right? People always assume like, why do you not go like straight here to like Africa and Iran? Because that would be weird, like you're not going straight line. But several not so friendly ones as well, like Russia. So chances are good that the overall distance covered would be significantly greater than a straight shot. And once the B-2s entered Iranian airspace... Yeah, this is one of the reasons why like nuclear fear was really high in Cold War times in America. Because Russia was just there. Right? It can literally fly straight from like Atlantic to directly USA or when it comes to Alaska, like directly like that. Right? Alaska goes like that in 2D map. It's not. It's really curved and go up like that. Whenever you see like sphere globe like that. I don't know why it says sphere globe. That is what globe means. It's a sphere. The route would become especially complex as the aircraft flew along pre-planned routes meant to avoid the most capable integrated air defense systems, taking care to manage not just their relative position in relation to those systems, but also their relative altitude and even the angle of the aircraft that they present to long-range radar arrays. Every step of the flight would be meticulously planned he to leave. It's like a kite. Look at that. <laughs> he does a thick bulge at front, but the whole thing is like really flattened. It looks like a kite. I mean, it's supposed to be stealthy, like for the radar and things. For every every light wave, it's supposed to ref doesn't supposed to reflect back. It's like scattered around. So even visually, when you see it, it just looks like weird like that. This is so cool. Look at that. Into the B-2's low observability to maximize their chances of success and of survival. As these B-2s approached the heavily defended airspace around Natanz, they could feasibly deploy their massive bunker buster mops from as far out as two dozen miles, allowing the weapon's forward momentum to carry them the By the way, I don't know why I just noticed that it looks like an eagle. Right? The eagle's nose, like a, you know, like weird shape like that, but like higher shape, like a nose, and this supposed to be eye. It is supposed to look like an eagle, right? Uh, American bald eagle style. Right? Look at, the, look at the dip here, but it's like go straight up. This is how eagles look. This is how their beaks are. What? Remaining distance, while the GPS guidance controlled tail fins steered the bombs directly into a specific target location that had been identified for offering the highest chance of success. Depending on the need, two B-2s could strike a specific point in the mountain complex with upwards of 120,000 pounds of bunker-busting power in rapid succession, laying waste to the underground facilities and sending any Iranian defenses not already on high alert into a frenzy. From there, it would be a very stressful mad dash for the border, flying along a different but similarly meticulously planned route out of Iranian airspace. Why? Why? It has such a small, uh, like, radar cross-section. Even if they know where, where it's been, they can't really target it that fast. I know there's been stories, I'm pretty sure I watched a video from Sandbox. What the fuck, why did my ear go out? Yeah, so I've seen like, okay, Iran can detect F-35s or whatever. Yeah, but how fast? Can it pinpoint it accuracy? Okay, that's what the F-35 was, but now it's not there, it's somewhere else. Same thing applies to B-2. Oh, that's what the B-2 was, but it's no longer there, it's flew somewhere else. How are you going to pinpoint it? Like, do they have that kind of sophisticated technology that really pinpoints where the B-2 bomber is? And it's such an insane amount of, like, radar cross-section. 
The radar is the old technology they have, like so there's like infrared and like heat seeking and things, but they're not sophisticated that much. So, and even then like B2 even hides its like exhaust heat, right? I am pretty sure Northrop made that technology to hide exhaust heat. Like this is just insane. How are we gonna find it? Before settling in for a long flight home or diverting toward friendly airstrips in Europe or Australia. The B-2 Spirit's stealthy design and radar-absorbent skin would go a long way toward rounding off the sharper edges of Iranian air defenses, but fighter intercepts would still be a significant concern. But despite the stress these pilots... It's surprising me that this is the whole story of Top Gun Maverick. I'm pretty sure it was Iran in the movie, isn't it? Like, you're supposed to, like, bunker-busting bomb is the one they use in that one. But they use F-18, because why use F-35 and F-22? It would be too easy, there is no movie. Or we can only use F-18. And another reason was like, you need a two-seater thing, because Tom Cruise is not gonna fly it. Right, like, you need Tom Cruise behind, well, or ahead, whatever, like, where our actual pilot flies it. F-22 doesn't have two seats, right? Same thing with F-35, I don't know. Wait a minute, none of those planes have, like, two seats? F-35 has two seats, doesn't it? I don't know. Yeah, that's why they use a fit in that one. It's would endure. A look inside the cockpit might fool you into thinking that there just wasn't much going on at all. Unlike the action-packed combat operations we see in the movies, a well-planned stealth bomber mission with the added benefit of a bit of luck would look to an outside party like a pretty boring road trip in the cockpit. Yes, seriously. But for the Iranian troops and nuclear researchers who thought they were safe some 300 feet below the earth, well, it would be a very different story. And with that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest and leave me a comment so I know. Yeah, seriously, when it comes to military, if you do it right, which is how military is supposed to work, where everything's planned out, everything by the book, Things just like, yeah, it's just, it just feels like everybody's in control, everybody's like stable. It's like basically how like Neil Armstrong, when he was in the Apollo mission trying to land on the moon. By the way, the fuel is running out and I can land it here, I have to find another spot. His blood pressure wasn't rising, his heartbeat wasn't rising, nothing was him, he was just calmly looking for the place. You're on the fucking moon, man. I would be shitting my pants, but I guess that's why he was the astronaut and not someone like me. Basically something like that. Anybody who does this, like calm, collected, it just feels like just like everyday things. It's like Amazon delivery guy delivering something, just cup simplistic, right? Like, wait a minute, did we do something? Yeah, they, you just did like earth, you know, like global news, breaking news element of shit. But yeah, it's just like everyday thing. This is, that always surprised me. Like Hollywood always dramatized things. That doesn't happen in military. I mean, obviously, if, like, shit is, is the fan and, like, command centers and things, they panic, maybe. But when it comes to operations, like, not really. Well, that was America's stealth bomber strike, send 30,000 pound message to Iran. How proportional message is going to be if this shit actually happens? Because here's the thing. America versus Iran back then, proportional days, was not a fair fight. I, I, even now, like, why Iran even, like, touching this? And today, even if Iran is strong, America is even more stronger compared to back then. America is insanely stronger. It's, it's in technology. It's really not a fair fight today. <laughs> it's like, where's that going to go? Right? Only thing I can think of, like, America, democracy, how it works, how its Congress work, how much proposal message they're willing to send, who's the president at the time, all these factors would reel in. But if it's just like point blank, oh, we are doing this, fuck everything, right? American music plays in the background. Yeah, that, that's really bad day for Iran and anyone who's involved. All right, well, I'll see you next time.